Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to take a look at the newly released F-22A by Talkbox Studios. You might have guessed that I would pick this up given it's right within my normal profile of planes, especially the fighter class. I have the weird planes and then the fast planes. This is one of those fast planes. And we are going to try to take off from Langley because we have a livery that is from a fighter squadron at Langley. And I say try to because I've had some interesting trouble. So the first time I flew it, I've already tried it out. Uh, the first time I flew it, it worked fine. No problems. Then there was a sim update uh, through Steam. It wasn't a big update. It, uh, when we loaded the game, it didn't update any files. But there was a small update through Steam. And since then, I've had some problems with the control surfaces. So we're going to see. There is two versions. There's the this version and a no fly-by-wire version. I'm actually going to try the no fly-by-wire version first, just in case it was the fly-by-wire that was messing up because of the update. But in either case, we have three liveries only. But then again, there is a limited selection of fighter squadrons and they all sort of look the same. Uh, so it's not like a huge uh, array of potential liveries. Hopefully people will make liveries for it. Uh, Top Mock Studios did release this plane previously as a freeware. It, it was a much, much simpler and sketchier version of the F-22, uh, but serviceable. Uh, and so there was a freeware one. I don't know if that's still available or not, but this is uh, definitely very different. I've already checked it out and verified that it is uh, much improved. Uh, there is one uh, thing for US customers. Make sure this is currently only available on the Just Flight website, and unfortunately, they haven't fixed their currency pricing. So even though it's $28, uh, sorry, 28 euros, it's $36, even though euro and dollar is at parity right now. So it ought to be $28. So if you can pay in euros, it'd probably be to your benefit. Even if uh, your service charges you a little bit for the currency conversion, it's probably not going to be that much. So keep that in mind. And we'll try to no-fly by, fly by wire just in case it was the fly by wire that was causing a problem. But the main attraction of this is the fly by wire system. It can do some interesting things with the thrust vectoring of the engines and all that business. So here we have the fuel tanks in the game, in flight, I mean. Uh, the tank system is a little bit more complicated than just left main, right main. The auxiliary tanks are actually the external tanks here. And we have the weapon arrays because this is not the marketplace version. I got this from the Just Flight website. And uh, so they will be displaying those. And on the Marketplace version, when it pops up, it isn't there yet. Uh, those will not be displayed, so keep that in mind. In response to the fact that I didn't have my control surfaces working on the subsequent flights, I decided to reinstall the plane. I also restarted my computer, so we will see if any of that helps. Uh, it does have Super Cruise uh, without the afterburner on, at altitude only. Uh, Without afterburner on, I was able to hold Mach 1.3. But at low altitude, you're not going to be able to hold past Mach 1 without the afterburner. Okay, so let's take a look at the cockpit first. Uh, we have multifunction displays that do do a few things. We have the engine display there, but we can uh, change it to uh, this display. Now, it's interesting. When the control surfaces weren't working, I noted that the flaps, the indicators were basically spinning, those little flap icons, if you will. Uh, they, it was spinning round and around, so this is a good sign that we actually have control right now. And in fact, let's uh, deflect. Yes, okay, so we are in business. So it might have been the flyby wire before we'll see maybe the whatever mini update has messed up the flyby wire but uh, we seem to have controls there and we have the map view and then the menu shifts down here and we have our stations you can see the six MRMs and two sidewinders i wish i know they don't want the weapons functional in the marketplace version or i mean the weapons aren't functional anyway but functional chaff and flare might be interesting just for fireworks. We should be able to fire off some fireworks, darn it. Okay, and then a fuel. So as you can see, the fuel system is much more complicated than indicated in the main menu. And then the E1 and E2 are the external tanks, which are currently draining right now. And we have uh, fuel weight and fuel flow there. 
the fuel flow sure does uh, change dramatically. It would be a good idea to keep an eye on that. In fact, I'll keep this display up. Uh, we have the control surface stuff over there. And uh, we have two versions of the map. Uh, this display in the center is a little bit problematic if you can't shift your view. I've, I haven't got track it, uh, IR enabled right now, but I do have it. Uh, so I can just shift myself down and click the buttons on top, but without being able to click the buttons on top, once you click menu here, you won't be able to change the view very easily. Well, you can shift yourself down using the key presses and everything. But anyway, the F22 really doesn't have a whole lot of uh, switches on the sides, so this is correct, right? Uh, nothing about this looks wrong. And... You know, it's sort of like the F-35 versions, though the F-35 has a lot more going on in the front panel. Uh, taking a look on the side here. Here is our plane, and let me just control surface stuff. Okay. Yep. And we do have the split air brakes. Sometimes they go inside, sometimes they go outside. I don't know how they decide that. Maybe by speed. And we do have thrust vectoring. You can see that, too. Okay, but this is the no fly by wire version, so we'll see how that goes. I have not fly flown this version yet. So, the afterburner effect. It's not actually a stock afterburner effect, it's a slightly different one. And I think they were trying to match the exhaust size. Sorry about the yawing, but. Okay, so uh, climbing. Let's let's actually hit the afterburner, and I don't recommend actually doing this unless you have a good reason to. Because take a look at our fuel flow: 132 pounds per hour, um, with only 24,000 pounds. So if you, you know, use the afterburner on takeoff at low level advisedly. And at a certain point, we're not gonna be able to hold this. And what it does is very interesting. Though without the flyby wire, I don't know if it's going to do the same thing, actually. So we're still pointed straight up, but we're only going 30 knots, 20 knots. So basically, we ended up we, we end up at zero knots. And no, it's not actually doing the same thing as the flyby wire version. So we're upside down. The fly-by-wire version uh, handles it very differently than this, actually. But its stall recovery is just remarkable, as it should be. But yeah, the, the, with the fly-by-wire active, it acts somewhat differently than what we saw just there. This was more of a normal way of doing things. And hopefully I'll get to show the fly-by-wire way. Even at this altitude, we're consuming 30 thousand pounds per hour but if I throttle back here let's get to just where the afterburners stop lighting uh, it's only 27,000 so about an hour worth of fuel uh, at maximum throttle without afterburner but with afterburner all it's like quadrupling the fuel consumption so that's nice I mean in a, if you want to call it that I mean in other words it's it seems realistic. Uh, that's a whole lot of extra fuel to pour on for not really that much extra performance. So unless you have a really good reason to use the afterburner, you probably shouldn't. Now we are at Mach 0.98 right now. And as usual, you'd want to break the sound barrier at above 30,000 feet. So we're going up. Okay, so without afterburner on, we'll try to break the sound barrier. So here I do have to use trim. With the fly-by-wire version, you just set the pitch with your control stick and then it handles all the trimming. So we are at Mach 1. Again, the afterburner is not on right now. And this is how it looks up here. And you know, one of the unfortunate things about modern planes with modern materials is they don't look as sort of detailed as other planes do. So this has a sonic boom effect at the mock cone, but it still produces sound in front. Possibly more sound in the back, but it's not quite like Concorde. But then Concorde ascensions are completely in the mock cone. 
Okay, we're at 42,000. We can just sort of trim down here, maybe. With the afterburner on it, it, it can exceed Mach 2. But again, it'll guzzle fuel like crazy. To be honest, it still feels like it has some fly-by wireness in that I don't feel like I need to trim too much. I think the computer has not relinquished control completely. <laughs> we do seem to have some sort of little blips on our radar there. There's something at flight level 340 apparently. Let's see if that jives with the VFR map. VFR map, uh, oh, uh, yeah, it might be that, that plane there. So yeah, Mach uh, 1.23, 24. Again, afterburner is not on and hasn't been. I'll try and level out here. 45,000 feet. I'm surprised. I, I, I still think that it's got like uh, pitch yaw and roll stability, even if it's not the full fly-by-wire system, because I don't think this plane is... I, I don't remember if it was a st stable without computer assistance so and it feels like it has computer assistance right now too so yep anyway Mach 1.3 as I said uh, we can get there without the afterburner super cruise is a go we're still on the external tanks right now I suppose to be fair we'll go for full speed here to see how it does so this full afterburner, at this altitude, 34,000 feet, we're consuming 90,000 pounds per hour. And we can go up to 65,000 and see how it does. Cabin pressure low. Oh, look at the interesting effects that they have. Note that we're only going 100 knots, but it's perfectly stable. The huge wing is really, really good. <laughs> It's really, really good. Okay, we are back at Mach 1. Note that Mach 1 is just 190-ish knots indicated. Indicated airspeed doesn't work so well when you're this high up. Uh, our ground speed is 550, but it's only 200 knots indicated. We're not accelerating great up here, even with the afterburner. The afterburner is now consuming 30,000 pounds per hour which is a tiny fraction of what it was doing down below. I don't know how to get rid of the cabin pressure low thing. Maybe past a certain altitude, that's just how it is. As you go faster, it also increases the fuel flow because you're getting more air through the intake. So now we're at 32,000 pounds per hour. Well, I think I'll have to go to a lower altitude to really get past Mach 2 here. So, actually on the display here, it shows no external tank fuel, but as if the tanks had dropped off, but we've still got the tanks. Oh, I haven't actually shown the deployment of the, of the doors, if you will. So, if we go into station mode and click door here, it shows the door animations opening, and in fact, there are our MRMs and Sidewinders, again, non-functional. But, yes, they exist. I'm too impatient to wait for this thing to accelerate to Mach 2. <laughs> Actually, um, I'm going to test it to destruction here. We're going to see how fast we can get before it gives me the black screen. Then we're going to take a look at the flyby wire and to see flyby wire one to see if it's working or not. Since I had problems with it. So Mach 2 and the fuel guzzlement is now past a hundred thousand pounds per hour. Interestingly, the H on the pounds per hour gets dropped off, so it just says PP instead of PPH when it has six digits. We are overspeed. So it says overspeed at Mach 2.2. .2. Oh, yeah, well, let's see where it actually breaks. All right.
I don't know if I can actually break. We're getting into thicker atmosphere here, so... I think we'll just survive, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, but there is the indicator speed. You can see it shake. Ah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, because once you get into the thicker atmosphere, the indicator speed can't be so high. So it's, uh, it's fairly realistic as far as performance is concerned. So let's take a look and see if the fly-by-wire one is playing nice now. I did reinstall the whole thing, so. But maybe this new update has messed it up. Okay, well, we have a way to check our control system, and yes, it is working, so we get to see what the fly-by-wire fly -wire is actually going to do now. Would be nice if the fly-by-wire could handle yaw properly. <laughs> okay, up we go. And we're just going to... Oh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll accelerate a little bit horizontally before going up severely. Okay, full afterburner, and we are climbing. Let's see what climb angle we can sustain here. In other words, our speed doesn't go down. Uh, it looks like a little bit more than 55 degrees could be doable. Maybe 55 degrees. Oh, it's going down quite a lot now, though. Do not underestimate 55 degrees, by the way. It still looks like a rocket going up. So I'm gonna pull it up and get it to zero speed, and I'll show you how that works with the fly-by-wire system enabled. Okay, so we're basically... Yeah, it's uncertain about our orientation because we're close to 90. And we get very close to zero speed as issues. Now, what you'll notice is we're not going to end up pointing at the ground here. We're, we're falling flat. You'll be able to see the vertical speed is going down 14,000, 15,000 feet per minute. But we're actually flat. We're like this. We're like an elevator going down. But we're actually recovering our speed because of the thrust vectoring of the engines. And so eventually, even though we're falling like this, our forward vector is going to be picked up. You can see the little forward vector coming up here. And so instead of having to point down to do a stall recovery, it can stall recover in this orientation. And now we're no longer going down. So that's one of the sort of maneuvers that this can pull off with the fly-by-wire enabled. And again, taking a look. Interestingly, it's not thrust vectoring right now. I guess it feels it doesn't need to, but those plates at the end do tilt if necessary. I wonder if I can induce them to do that. Let's actually go up and see what happens with them. Okay, so we're flat. It's sort of actually nuzzling it up, the bottom one. They're sort of tilting up a little bit. And then there's the vent on top. You see there. And we'll see what it does when it's finally recovered. I think it's slowly moving them down to level. Yeah, they've slowly moved down to level and the little vents on top are closing. And in there, it, it sort of had a jerk when it reacquired the forward vector. It also had the leading edge slots down. So that's all the fly-by-wire doing its business. Okay, well, I should try and land it once, just for completeness sake. I'll just go back to Langley. 
helpful pull-up indicator. <laughs> well, let's see its performance uh, flying really low. We are out of afterburner right now. If you actually try to get past the sound barrier while at low altitude, it won't. Uh, not without the afterburner, but let's see if we're already past the sound barrier, how it does. So whatever problems I had before, they seem to be fixed on a reinstall on the plane. It holds its speed on a turn really well. Especially considering how huge its wing surface is. But we're consuming a lot of fuel here. Let me just check. We have afterburner off. Okay, off. And yeah, even with afterburner off right now at this altitude, we're consuming 55,000 pounds per hour, which means we'd have less than half an hour even with full tanks. We are past Mach 1.1. We're holding past Mach 1.1 without the afterburners here, but we are using a lot of fuel to it. We might as well be on afterburners considering how much fuel we're using. When you throttle down, it can slow down prodigiously, and I don't even have the air brakes out. Air brakes are the rudders. So, this time they splayed out outwards, sometimes they splay out inwards. It's interesting the reflection effects on the windshield. I find those very interesting. The flaps seem to be either down or up, basically. Very smooth flying in. I mean, you would expect that with a fly-by-wire. Oh, it's taller than I thought. Okay, and we are down. We were a little bit heavy. We still have basically all our internal fuel. Anyway, as I bring it in here, I'll wrap it up. This has been the Top Mach Studios F22. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.